Man, I've just got so much stuff. I got glasses now, and I left my water bottle over there. I just, I'm all out of sorts. Is this your book? I don't know where that comes from. Hey, y'all, all right? I remember whenever I was a kid growing up, my dad wanted me to watch a movie. He said it was in his eyes is the greatest movie ever shown. Have you ever seen Patton? You've seen that movie about George S. Patton? Some of you old timers love that movie. You know. Patton was known as Old Blood and Guts. That was his handle, that was his nickname. He was known for his hard-charging, colorful personality. During World War II, he was commander of the Western Task Force in North Africa, and he basically pushed Germany, him along with others, the, the English, I think they kind of threw their hat in, but we pushed the Germans back from North Africa into Sicily and then into Italy. And, and just through that, I mean, Patton was destined to become an American war hero. But on August 10th, Patton went to visit the wounded soldiers in the hospital there in Italy. And he encountered a private, and he, as he began to talk with the private, he noticed this guy ain't got no wounds. There's nothing wrong with him. There's not a scratch on him. And so Patton asked the man, he said, why are you here? And the guy said, I just I can't take it anymore, sir. The shelling is just too much for me. Patton lost it. He went into a rage. He started cursing the guy out. He hit him twice on top of the head with his fist, took out his pistol, pointed at it, pointed it at him, and said, I'm going to kill you if you don't get back to battle. His anger just absolutely took over. Well, Eisenhower found out about it when he was notified about Patton's behavior. He sent a reprimand to Patton, and he demanded that Patton go and apologize to the off or to the soldier that he had offended and all of the eyewitnesses there in the hospital. Patton was criticized by the press, uh, members of Congress. He was. He was criticized even by other generals. His mentor, John Pershing, even criticized him and condemned Patton's outburst. And for Patton to have to go back to those soldiers and, and make a personal apology for his behavior, it, for a man with just such a huge ego and, and, and such a huge colorful personality, it just had to have crushed him. Well... Uh, Patton was eventually reassigned after the incident. Eisenhower swears his decisions had nothing to do with what happened in that army hospital. But uh, Patton was reassigned. He would not command troops for another 11 months. And um, he was passed over for command of the Allied assault in the Normandy. That was really what he was wanting. But he was passed over. They'd give it to someone else. Eventually, he'd go on to lead the Third Army as they pressed the Germans back across uh, the Rhine River, Battle of the Bulge. Uh, he entered into Berlin. After the war, he was given the military governorship of Bavaria, but he was eventually relieved of his duty when he got into a heated exchange with Eisenhower over statements that Patton had made concerning the, the war. Uh, Patton's legacy as one of the United States' most brilliant military minds, will forever be marred by his lack of self-discipline in controlling his anger. And as we've been working through the book of Proverbs, we've been looking at what, what a difference godly wisdom makes in the way that we behave and the way that we live, how valuable wisdom is to our life and the words that we use. We're coming to this part right now where we're going to see how we can apply wisdom to our anger. Uh, I don't think I need to ask this. Do I? anybody ever get angry? Uh, of course you do. Everybody, everybody in here gets angry. Angry is a natural emotional response to our environment and our circumstances. S studies show 
that, that men get angry on average about six times a week. Women only get angry on average about three times a week. But nowadays, it looks like that men and women are beginning to lose their temper equally. Uh, they just get diff- uh, angry at different things. Like, uh, it's, it's interesting how each sex handles their anger. Missouri State did a study on anger management not too long ago, and they found that men, when men get angry, we vent and we rant and we rave, and sometimes we get violent, you know, sometimes you just got to go to the gravel, right? Let's, let's just step outside, take it outside. That's the way men handle it. But men are more likely to get angry at stuff. You know, we get angry when things break down or when something doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Women are much more passive-aggressive in their anger. They hold it in or they make sarcastic remarks. They, they snipe or they mock or they may even just give you the silent treatment. You know, they, they may, they're, they're known for secretly sabotaging the work of someone they're angry at. Any women can uh, uh, comprehend how that, that works out and you're kind of retaliating. But most likely, women are more likely to get angry at people. Men get angry at things. Women get angry at people. But both of us, when we're angry, we're much more likely uh, to express our anger within our homes. That's so interesting. Um, we feel, I guess there's a freedom there that, that we feel more comfortable venting our anger when we're in the confines of our own home rather than anywhere else. But the good news for all of this is that the older you get your anger dissipates with age. And so those of you seasoned adults in here, you know, you are less likely to lose your cool. And that's what I'm hoping for as I grow older, is that I'm less likely to lose my cool. Whenever I was much younger, I would lose, uh, I would just lose it, just at the slightest uh, error, or the the fence, I'd just lose it. Um... But the Bible has some important instructions concerning anger, and it talks about how we should get a grip on our temper. It all has to do with the wisdom that we possess. You know, because wise people, they can control their anger. Here's, here's the verse that we're going to start out with. It's Proverbs 14.29. And I'm reading out of the Good News translation. I liked how it said it better than others. If you stay calm, you are wise. But if you have a hot temper, you only show how stupid you are. So let's look at how wisdom affects anger. Number one, if you're taking notes on the back of your bulletin there, number one is this. Wise people remember results. I mean, have you ever done something when you're angry that you later regret? Have you ever said something that you wish you could take back? Or have you ever made a bad decision when you're angry? Maybe you got angry and you quit your job and you got home and you was like, what have I just done? Or, or maybe, maybe you fired off an angry email or a letter and, and you just afterwards you're just wishing you could take all that back. Have you ever ruined a relationship because of your anger? Maybe you just vented at somebody and now you hardly talk to that person anymore because of your, your anger. Have you ever hurt somebody emotionally or or physically or psychologically with your angry outbursts. You see, wise people remember the aftermath of their outbursts. We do foolish and stupid things when we're angry. Proverbs 29-22 out of the Living Bible says this, A hot-tempered man starts fights and gets into all kinds of trouble. You know, I, whenever I was growing up, my, my dad used to remind me all the time, he said it in a lot cruder way, I won't, but he said, you lose your head, you lose your rear end. He wouldn't say it in quite that nice of terms, but the truth is, when you lose your temper, you lose. There's the possibility of losing your job or your health or your friends or the respect that you're due. The, the Bible even says that losing your temper can, has the potential for, to cause you to lose your family. Proverbs 11.29 says, The fool who provokes his family to anger and resentment will finally have nothing worthwhile left. If you vent your anger at your family during a family time, strong possibility you'll wake up and not have a family. 
When we get angry, our most common response is to do what? We get to yell. And I don't know why that is, but the more angry we are, the, the louder we get. You know, I, I think it's probably because in the short term it gets results. Hey, whenever I lost my temper and I raised my voice, I could get my son's attention real quick. Right? But long term, I don't know that I it had the, uh, the results that I was really looking for. I, I think that the, the, the consequences of my behavior were not beneficial long term. You know, because anger alienates. It, it drives people away. It, it damages relationship. Nobody wants to be friends or spend time around someone who's always exploding at every little thing. You don't want to be around that type of people. But wise people are mindful of the previous experiences that they've had when they have vented their anger. You see, wise people can remember that time that I lost my temper and the consequences I had to deal with afterwards. And so they regard losing their temper as, as a very possible uh, dangerous outcome. And so they always are mindful. Wise people are always mindful, just saying in their mind, you know, that's something I never want to deal with again. That's what wise people do. The second thing that wise people do is they reflect before they react. They recognize that the anger welling up within them, it, it can immediately come out. And they refuse to respond impulsively. If you're wise, you should know that your first reaction isn't always your best reaction. Wise people think through things first. Wise people delay their response. Uh, they, they say, I'm going, to, I'm going to be mindful of this and I'm not going to say what I want to say and I'm going to take some time, however long that's going to take, I, I, I need to reflect before I react. In fact, wise people I, have come to learn that the longer that they can delay their response, sometimes the better. Uh, the Bible says, do not go to bed when you're angry. You know, that's not necessarily how fools deal with anger though, is it? When fools get angry, they are quick to respond, they lose their composure, and they let their emotions do the talking for them. Now, I want to show you a few verses out of Proverbs, and I want you to see how Proverbs contrasts and compares the wise and the foolish with regard to anger. The first is out of Proverbs 29.11. It says, foolish people let their anger run wild. That means there's no bridle on it. It's unchecked. But wise people keep themselves under control. They take a moment and they take a breather. Second verse here, fools quickly, quickly show they're upset. But the wise ignore the insults. That's out of Proverbs 12, 16. And I get that idea whenever I read that. I get the idea of, of a, a fool almost being a knee-jerk reaction. That I'm angry and my first response is to do this and I'm just going to let it out. Proverbs 19.11 says, Sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. So interesting how wise people will take the hit. They'll take the bullet. Fools, I think it's an issue of pride, don't you? Fools as they're shot or, or they have insults held upon them, they want to fight back. It's an issue of pride. I'm not going to let anybody talk to me like that. I'm, but the wise people, they just take a step back and they, they want to, let's investigate. Let's, let me just think about this before I respond. But fools, they explode when they get angry. Wise people just kind of move on down the road. You know why? Because godly wisdom is telling them Whatever you want to do right now, don't. Because more likely than not, it's going to be the wrong response. Your emotions are going to take over. You're going to say things that you don't want to say, or you're going to do something that you will later regret. But fools say things like this. I just can't help it. That's just the way I am. That's a bad excuse. That's a terrible excuse. Nobody is forced against their will to lose their temper. You can keep your composure. 
anger, your, your anger outburst, that is something you have a choice over. You can control it. I mean, think about this. You can control yourself when you want to, can't you? If you're in the middle of an angry uh, argument with your wife and the phone rings, you don't pick up the phone and go, what do you want? You know? You pick up the phone and go, hello, how are you? I remember John talking about when people would show up for church and that car would just be bubbling with frustration. And he said they'd be pull up at the front and you know it'd just be like, he, you just sense the heat coming off, but they'd break up, walk up and shake your hand. How are you, brother? You good? You know, you can control your attitude. And so, just be mindful of that. There, that is a, just a poor excuse that that's just the way I am. I mean, think about, I want you to think just for a second about why we get angry. The things that cause us to uh, feel uh, anger is because someone's hurt us. I mean, they've hurt us physically or emotionally, and we've said before in here, hurt people hurt people. Uh, sometimes we get angry because we're frustrated. You know, my expectations haven't been met, or I'm, I'm forced to wait. That's a big one for a lot of us, is you're so impatient. Your anger boils over. And then you take it out on that little clerk at Walmart. God bless her soul, she ain't doing nothing but sitting there working. And so you had to wait a little longer. You know, there's times that I get angry when nothing seems to go right. I, anytime that I'm working on something around the house, if I'm trying to fix something, uh, it never goes right. Always something wrong happens, don't have the proper tools or whatever, and I just lose it. I mean, all those things have a common denominator. It's things that are happening to me. It's an issue of pride at its root. You know, another reason we get angry is just simply because we're insecure. I think we're, we get angry when our back's against the wall. We get angry when we feel threatened or, or that we feel fearful or when we sense that there's no personal security or nobody's standing up for us. We get angry. We get angry at injustices. The Bible says the wise man will get his anger under control. We need to learn how to deal with these things. You have to apply a little wisdom. Because wise people stop and they begin to ask questions. Like, is this really a big deal? Or they'll say, is, is losing my temper worth losing my happiness? Is it worth losing my reputation? Is it worth losing my personal testimony? Have I, I, I like people who are willing to postpone their anger and simply question and maybe think about, think through this in their mind when they say, have I considered all the possible viewpoints or motives or someone else's intentions? A lot of times we get angry thinking that somebody's intentionally doing something to try to cause us to be angry. And a lot of times people just need to have the benefit of the doubt. And so I, here's a question I want to ask you. In, in situations when someone else is causing you to get angry, is your first response to line them out or give them the benefit of the doubt? Or is your view the only possible angle or the only possible solution or viewpoint? Give people the benefit of the doubt. And you can do that if you'll just delay your response, if you'll remember that an angry outburst could have consequences and just take some time. You can avoid those situations by just taking a moment to stop and consider all the possibilities and all the, the outcomes. I mean, put yourself in that other person's shoes. Maybe McDonald's is taking longer to get you your McGriddle because they're short-staffed. Come on. Yeah, you have to wait an extra five minutes to get that cup of coffee. You know, it's not that cashier's fault. Don't take it out on them. It damages your reputation. It damages your personal testimony. I would just say this. Pick your battles. There are some battles that are worth fighting and there are some battles that aren't worth it. Number three, wise people restrain themselves. 
Because when the, our first reaction, when, when we, the first thing that we do when we get angry is we speak. That's the knee-jerk reaction. We speak out of anger, and a lot of times those words that we use are laced with the same level of vigor as our anger presently is. I mean, there's something, when you get angry, you need to know there's something that's going on within your body physiologically. Your adrenaline is spiking. Your blood pressure's running through the roof. I, I've heard of people that get so angry they black out. There's something that's going on inside of you whenever you experience anger. And the result is, if you're not cautious, you will say th something that you will regret. But wise people know that when you're angry, that they need to restrain their words. Look at this. It's Proverbs 21, 23. It says, watching what you can say, what you can, say sa can save you a lot of trouble. Watching what you say can save you a lot of trouble. When two people get angry and one starts using harsh words, what's the reaction of the other person? They're going to start using harsh words as well. Both are going to begin raising their voices. They're both going to be using equally harsh language, sarcastic remarks, and what happens? The problem only escalates. Instead of dealing with one problem, we now have a myriad of problems that we have to deal with. The Scriptures say this. The Scriptures say that as a Christian, wise people know that a soft, gentle response in wisdom smothers the fire in both people. Proverbs 51, a gentle answer will calm a person's anger, but an unkind answer will cause more anger. Here's the thing. Wise people, people who, who walk through daily life with godly wisdom, they are aware that anger is contagious. Anger is the original covid you don't want to get near somebody that's got COVID. You don't want to get near somebody that's angry too. Because anger is contagious. You know, I, there, you know, I can just hear my wife tell me about something at work that makes her angry. And you know what happens to me? I get angry. I get mad about it. I, I find myself getting mad even though it's not my fight. I find myself getting upset even though nobody's offended or hurt me. Her anger fuels mine. It's, it's contagious. And, and also, another thing you need to be aware of, if you're a parent, you need to be aware that your children learn how to deal with their anger by watching you. And, and, and so every time you lose your temper, every time you lose your cool, you are modeling for your child how to deal with anger. If you're one of those guys that wants to punch the first person that comes along when you get angry, how do you think your child's going to grow up? That's the way your child is going to grow up trying to deal with their anger. Be aware of that. We learn from observing other people. And for many of you, you are your child's hero. They look up to you. They're learning how to do life by watching you. And if they see you get into a situation where you're obviously becoming angry and they see you hurling obscenities or kicking the cat, you know what your kid's going to do the first time he gets angry? He's going to kick the cat. Well, sum all this up. I mean, a lot of this is just common sense. The Bible's... Uh, so practical, the book of Proverbs, it's, it's such a great way to, uh, of things to uh, apply to our life. But without exception, every single one of us, we will get angry at some point. The question is, what will you choose, how will you choose to respond to your anger in that moment? Should you repress it? I mean, should you just swallow it? Maybe push it down? That's not healthy. You, you realize that, that by taking your anger and just swallowing it and repressing it, that it causes all kinds of biochemical changes in your body when, when you swallow your anger? In fact, it's been shown. Uh, angry, cynical people die young. Men who score on this scale of hostility are four times more likely to die prematurely than men who, 
who, who score lowly. And, and here's why I'll just say, I, I found this quote, I love it. It says, if you don't talk it out, you're going to take it out. And that means that if you don't pause and think of the wise thing to say and talk through your anger, I know it sounds sissified, but if you don't do that, you will eventually vomit all over everybody that you come in contact with. And that's not a pretty sight. And nobody wants to be around someone like that. Well, then the next question is, then should I just express it? Well, of course, we've already discovered that's not a good idea either. But that's what some people do. They just explode, they vent, and, and, that, and, and it just pours out all over everybody around them. And it creates hard feelings. And you'll wake up some morning and you'll be living by yourself in a van down by the river because you don't know how to control your anger. You know, exploding, you may think that you're protecting your pride. You, you may think, uh, I, I, I have, I'm a human being and I need to stand up for myself. And so whenever somebody offends me, I'm just going to let them have it back. In the short term, you may get some results. But in the long term, it's going to absolutely have devastating effects on your relationships. Because anger alienates. So, you shouldn't repress it. Definitely don't express it. The godly response is that you should confess it. You need to take your anger to the Lord. You need to confess your anger to Him. You need to let Him know that you're angry. You can vomit all over. You can just let it out. And God will just sit there and take it. Because... He already knows you're angry and He'll allow you the space to confess all that to Him. There's a story in the Bible, and I won't go through all of it, there's a story in the Bible where David actually goes up to a shrine in the northern part of, of Israel. And during that time, he sees one of the friends of Saul the king. And his friend, or Doug the Edomite, goes back and tells Saul, that he saw David up there and he starts telling lies about David. David did not lose his anger at Doug the Edomite. You know what? If you go back and you read, I think it's Psalm 51, maybe somewhere in there, David just laments and vents his anger at the Lord because of what Doug has done to him. That's what we're supposed to do. When you get angry, ask God why you're angry. Begin and just say, or even tell him, this is the thing that's caused me to be anger, angry. And Lord, I need help dealing with it. I need the space. Give me peace in this situation. Ask him for patience to respond appropriately. That's, that's that whenever you delay your response, in that intermediate time when you're delaying your response, that's the time you should go to the Lord. And you should say, God, I need help dealing with this. I don't understand why I'm getting so mad about this, but God, I need some, I need some insight. I need, I need to see this situation through your eyes, God. Maybe, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. Well, maybe it's a pride issue with me. But you can be honest with God, and He can handle whatever you throw your way. But the key to anger management and that, and that whole strategy there, the first thing, you've got to have a personal relationship with Jesus before you can do that. Christ is the key to our anger management. He will help you get to the root problem of your anger. And so if someone's hurting you, uh, He will heal that hurt with His love. If, if someone has frustrated you, He can replace your frustration with His peace. If, if you're feeling insecure, He will fill you with His power. And, and through all that, you can find the confidence, you can find the assurance, just, just by knowing that He's in control of my life. And when you come to this point where you're walking daily, knowing that God is in control of your life, then when all these things happen, they're not threats anymore. They're not points of, uh, of, of, of fire to light you off. Because at the point when God is in control of your life, you no longer care what anybody else has to say. 
You don't care what other people do. You don't care what other people think. It, it's just like uh, water off a duck's back. They're, they're not offending me. God is in control of my life. And, and this isn't so devastating. This isn't such a big deal. And they have the power to go to Him and say, God, I need wisdom to be able to deal with this. I need, to, I need the exact words to say. I, and a gentle answer. Lord, give, give me patience. Settle my nerves. Settle my anxiety. Here's how I want to respond. But as a follower of Christ, I know that it will damage my testimony and my reputation. And that's the last thing that we want to do. We don't want any relationships to be devastated because we can't keep our temper. And so I want to encourage you, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus and you experience anger management issues, maybe it's time to seek a, another strategy rather than that counselor. Maybe you need a personal relationship with Jesus. Someone who can help you deal with life's frustrations. Someone that will walk with you and remind you that you are loved and that there is a plan and a future for you. Deal with your anger appropriately as followers of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank You for the way You love us. Lord, for the grace that You've shown us and the mercy that You've extended us. Lord, we are not righteous within ourselves. We only um, experience the, uh, the possibility of standing before Your throne because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Without Jesus' courage and His loving kindness going to the cross, Lord, there's nothing that we would be destined for rather than separation for You from eternity. And Father, I pray for those that are here this morning that can identify with all the issues we've talked about with anger. Lord, I pray for those that have been hurt. Lord, I pray that You'd replace their hurt with Your love. And Father, for those that are frustrated, Lord, I pray that You would be their peace in times of, of anger or frustration. And Lord, for those that are insecure, I pray that You would remind them that they're deeply loved and that You're in control of all things. Lord, fill us with confidence and assurance to face the days and weeks ahead. And Lord, I pray that Your Spirit would exist within each of us believers and come to us at those times that we begin to boil over like a, like a tea kettle and just gently whisper to us that You're still on Your throne and You're still in control. We love You. We give You praise, glory, and honor for it's in Christ's name we pray. Hi, thank you for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to ring the little bell to be notified when we add new videos. Since our founding in 1877, our goal here at Arnhart has been to create God-centered teaching available for everyone, regardless of their status or station. Today, that looks like making trustworthy Bible teaching available to everyone even if they don't make it to a church building on Sunday. So for more information, check out our website at arnhart.org or join us live on Facebook Sundays at 1045 a.m. As always, we love you and hope to see you next Sunday.